in Hollywood. It's the b- 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 Tom Likas Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right wing wackum or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Uh, The McClatchy newspaper chain, owners of Sacramento Bee and other newspapers, they... They syndicate columns. This is a column written by somebody named Fred Gonzalez. Fascinating. Says here, the holiday season has officially begun. And for, hold on to your hat, here's that word again. And for singles, you desperate individuals, This can be the best and worst of times. The reasons are obvious. You don't want to spend the holidays alone. I'm just reading what Fred Gonzalez wrote here. You don't want to spend the holidays alone. You want to share them with a loved one. You want to guarantee that someone in your life will buy you something you want. If you're dating during the holidays, things can get exciting. Exchanging wish lists, attending parties, feeling as if you are on display when meeting your significant other's family members for the first time. Our listeners are not doing that. And if you're planning it, cancel it immediately. But what if your relationship is on the rocks and you want to get out? Do you break up before or after the holiday season? That's a tough one, says Fred. Even Santa wouldn't know if it's naughty or nice. If you decide to break up before the season of giving, you may feel relieved at first, but later face a swirl of emotions as you head to the stores and watch everyone else shopping for a loved one getting into the spirit of the season. Attending holiday parties as, quote, newly single. How desperate does that sound? That that phrase just invites people to say, Oh, I've got a friend I want to match you up with. He, oh, he's such a nice guy. Oh, uh, I have a daughter. I have a granddaughter. I, <laughs> oh, you're newly single. I know somebody I want to introduce you to. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yes, says you're attending holiday parties as newly single can have some benefits as long as you have plenty of rum eggnog. But you may have to listen to, quote, lifelong singles sharing their tales of woe, describing their bitterness towards the commercialized Christmas season. You just have to walk away from those people, says Fred. Breaking up before the season could also lead to random calls, text messages, and emails from your ex blaming you for trashing dreams of holiday bliss, wanting you to know how much of a Grinch you are. Now, if you decide to wait, says Fred, which he says would be my preference, he says, call me greedy, but I want my present, he says you can still enjoy some of the benefits of the holidays but it will challenge how you maintain your interest. There is also the tricky gift exchange scenario. Do I buy an expensive gift to cloak my true feelings? Or do I buy something cheap so that I can save money knowing how this Christmas story will end? (laughs) 
She's going to get suspicious if she gives me an iPhone and I give her a bus pass. If you decide to stay together through Christmas, there is a small window of opportunity to break up. Five days. And then comes New Year's Eve. Generally, when you plan your holiday schedule, you account for both events. Who wants to start the new year by dumping someone? Sometimes it takes care of itself. You know how that works, right? If I don't get an engagement ring by New Year's Eve, that's it. Well. <laughs> Hooray! I don't even have to do the dirty work. Fantastic! As I always say, it's the perfect crime. Says here, just as greedy as sticking around for a present is ensuring you have a guaranteed kiss at the strike of midnight, December 31st. Taking an informal poll of South Florida guys, I guess that's where Brad lives, brought mixed results. One said the timing depends on whether you want to remain friends with your ex. Several said, after the holidays, one guy, in hopes that his girlfriend wraps herself in a big red bow as a gift on Christmas Eve, several said before to save money and drama. One guy advised to stay apart through Valentine's Day. Was his name Tom Likas? <clears throat> Which creeps up on us almost as soon as our New Year's Eve hangover ends, says Fred. The guy said, if you're lucky her birthday is in between, you save lots of money. So uh, there you go. Fred Gonzalez, who presumably writes for the uh, Miami Herald, a McClatchy newspaper. And um, talking about what happens for the holidays, what do you do now? Of course, you know what I recommend. I recommend losing touch with everybody. Everybody until February the 15th. I mean, just find other things to do. And you see, if we all do it, it works like a charm. Let me tell you why. If you live in a city where the Tom Likas show is broadcast, and all the guys get together and do it my way, listen to my grand scheme. This works like a charm. Remember I said I had the final solution to something else? <laughs> Here's my grand scheme for the holidays. Everybody just cut ties with the people you're involved with, married to, dating regularly. Everybody just cut them off. Stop taking their calls. Stop responding to text messages. And you know how to play the game, right? They they call, you see the caller ID, you don't answer, it goes to voicemail. Then you call back at a time that you know they can't pick up the phone, like when they're at work or 1 a.m. or sometime you know they're busy. You say, oh, I just got your message. And then you just keep it going like that where you don't actually talk to anybody. You just keep um, occasionally returning calls or occasionally returning text messages way after they were sent when they're no longer relevant just to keep them somewhat involved. But you are definitely, by the way, you should have done this before Thanksgiving. If you brought somebody to Thanksgiving dinner, it makes it more complicated. But um, you want to make sure that they don't ask you questions about what you're doing for Christmas Eve, what you're doing for Christmas Day, what you're doing for New Year's Eve or New Year's Day besides working off a hangover. And certainly you want to keep that going another six weeks to Valentine's Day. If we all do this at the same time, guys, take note. If we all do this at the same time, that's going to put a lot of chicks into the pool. Bars are going to be teeming with lonely women who would like to be with somebody for the holidays. This is what I call the Tom Likas human grab bag. Where what you do is we're all going to... You ever do like a Secret Santa at the office? We're all going to throw our girls into the bag. And then we're going to reach in and grab one for the holidays. Somebody that none of us is involved with. Somebody who got dumped by another member of our perverted club. 
We're going to bang the crap out of whatever girls come out of the grab bag and then dump all of them around the 15th and find our way back to the people we like dating or that we know if that's what you insist on doing. Me, I'm always going to the human grab bag, but but your mileage may vary. You may be the kind of person who needs a relationship, but what you got to do is string her along till the 15th of February. And in the meantime, if all the Tom Likas show listeners participate, there's going to be all these chicks. And I'm telling you, there is no time in the world better to find chicks at bars than the holiday season. The closer you get to 12, 24, <laughs> and the more likely it is that chick you see sitting alone at the bar is feeling a lot of self-pity, low self-esteem, self-hatred. And she's looking for any sign that guys find her hot. And she'll do something she'll regret for the rest of her life. Wouldn't you like to be the thing she does that she'll regret for the rest of her life? Let me tell you something. And I'm not ashamed to admit it. Many women regret the night they spent with me, and they continue to regret it to this day. And might I tell you, because I'm on the radio, I'm always in their face. I know what they're going through. Some of them are randomly tuning in right now going, That son of a bitch! He did that to me! Yes, I did, dear. And I continue doing it. I will never forget, and I've told this story almost yearly, I think, since it happened. I will never forget. I won't name the bar because I don't want to narrow it down to who the person is. Walked into a bar on Christmas Eve somewhere in Hollywood and saw one chick. This chick was from South America, and she was dressed to kill. But she was at a bar that... While it's one of my favorite bars in town, I wouldn't say you have to dress up to go there. There's no $14 martinis or anything. This woman was dressed as if she was going to the Four Seasons for Christmas Eve or something. I mean, she was dressed up. Heavy accent, cleavage out to here. Drinking one drink after another and sitting by herself at the bar. And I uh, sat there a few seats away from her and allowed her, in my true style, I allowed her to initiate conversation with me, which she did. What are you doing here on Christmas Eve? By the way, in South America and many countries in other parts of the world, Christmas is celebrated on Christmas Eve. Uh, Americans are the ones who are out of step with many of the other countries. Which is fine, because I'm American, and I celebrate Christmas on Christmas morning as well. But uh, if you were in Argentina, Venezuela, Colombia, places like that, may I tell you that, um, and I'm, I'm dead serious about this, uh, it's the 24th that everybody cares about. The 24th, not the 25th. The 24th is when people have their Christmas dinner. The 24th is when people come over. The 24th is when people open their presents. And there's no waking up on Christmas morning and opening your presents in these countries. So when this woman was out on the 24th of December by herself, and she was from South America, she was very, very lonely <laughs> and very sad. And sure enough, as the evening wore on, and this was December 24th, mind you, and we're at this bar, this woman starts telling me her tale of woe. She's been dating a guy who has a girlfriend, who he lives with. And she's been seeing him on the side, and he's been promising to leave his girlfriend for the longest time, but it hasn't happened. And it still doesn't happen. And it doesn't matter how long she waits or nags him or whatever, he never leaves. And so she, she, by the way, he doesn't realize, that he, he, he just committed the perfect crime too. I mean, I, I wanted to give the guy a high five, but he was home with his family, with his girlfriend and their kids. But this woman said that finally she told him, that's it. I'm not seeing you anymore. And she broke up with him the week of Christmas. And so she did what many women do. She cried for several days. And then when she was able to wipe the tears away, she apparently took a very long, fragrant shower 
carted herself up in every possible way, dressed in the most sexy and upscale manner she could think of. But then instead of going to the Four Seasons or (laughs) going to the Beverly Hills Hotel or the Hotel Bel Air, she went to a neighborhood bar and plopped herself down there. And you know what it's like on Christmas Eve, right? Like there's no NBA, there's no NHL. You turn to the sports channels and there's like, you know, some boxing match from last February. (laughs) There's uh, bowling from you don't know what year and whatever is playing. Okay, in case you haven't tuned in to the sports channels on Christmas Eve, that's what's on. So she's sitting at the bar, some sports channel on, and she's telling me the story about the boyfriend and she is drinking heavily. And after I explained who I was, she she said, oh, I know who you are. <laughs> so uh, after we were done uh, getting soused and they, they wanted to close up about 11 o'clock so they could get home for Christmas at this bar, this woman put a, it was literally some big mink coat or something. I mean, she was just dressed impossibly well. And she followed me in her car up to my place. And she uh, took all these layers of wonderful lacy frilly clothing off, revealing this unbelievable brown skin, perfect body, unbelievable, and I just banged the crap out of her for two solid hours. And then, uh, after we were done banging, she gets up, and I think she's going to the bathroom. But she gets up, And she starts looking for her stockings and her underwear. And I said to her, not that I wanted her to do anything different, I said, where are you going? And she says, well, I I just had sex with Tom Likas. I know the rules. And she called the Beverly Hills Cab Company while she continued to get dressed. And like somebody who'd done this many times before, she got uh, finished getting dressed. It took about 10 minutes. And about that time, the doorbell rang, and it was the Beverly Hills Cab Company. And she went upstairs and left in the cab, and I never heard from her again. And it was a very Merry Christmas indeed. Now, you see, I'm trying to apply that to our entire listening audience. I'm saying, you know what? Now, she did the dumping here, but we all need to do the dumping. Dump your girl back into the pot. You will have all these women sitting in bars feeling sorry for themselves. And they will all do things they will ultimately live to regret. They will all have sex with people they hardly know. They will cry. They will feel miserable. But we will have all gotten what we want without having to spend money on Christmas gifts, without having to meet her parents or her kooky uncle or her uh, bitchy cousin or whatever. Uh, New Year's Eve, we won't be under any pressure to buy uh, engagement rings. We won't be under pressure to uh, dress up in black tie and go to some expensive party or something. We'll be out at another bar picking up another chick who has no date for New Year's Eve. Do you understand where I'm going with this? Why have a date for New Year's Eve? If we all break up with the girls we're seeing now, if we all go into hiding on the chicks we're banging and seek some new meat for the holidays... We're going to have more than we can handle. And you can always say the usual stuff. You're busy. Your boss is a slave driver, whatever, blah, 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 blah. And finally, uh, around the 15th of February, if you want to start drifting back towards the people you you know and trust, the people you uh, enjoy banging or enjoy hanging out with, that's the time to go back. I wonder if any of you have broken up with your girl. Or for that matter, your guy, but I doubt women are breaking up with their guys in large numbers here. But I wonder if any of you have taken my advice. I wonder if any of you have broken up with your girl for the holiday season. I wonder how many of you are going to try my way of doing it. Some of you may think I'm mean, insensitive, bad. We'll talk to you, too. But I would just like to know how many of you, how many of you uh, are going to try this and... um, how many of you have done it in the past, and for how many of you has it worked? Tom like this. Tom like this. One hundred. Five hundred. Tom. Tom. I think you're a misogynist. A what? A misogynist. A misogynist. What is that? 
That's a person that doesn't like women. A misogynist. M I S. Well, I don't want to spell it. Let me tell you what I called you. Can you spell it? Yes, I can. Really? Go ahead. Uh, M M Y S G O N I S T I C. Misogynist. Yeah. The Tom Likey Show. It's the Tom Likas Show, where we say the only way to get talk radio for less is to record it yourself, and you don't know how. It's one 800 tom That's our telephone number. Go ahead. Do it yourself. What do you know? You sit there. Uh, who was that guy who used to be on at night? That bald guy who used to have a show. Yeah, you sit there and talk. He's sitting right now in the closet doing voices. By the way, it's great. <laughs> He's sitting there saying things about me on his website. <laughs> Very nice. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Let's go to your calls here. It's Emily on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Yes. Um, okay, so I've been listening to you for a while. I don't know, like, I can't not listen to you, but, like, you bug the crap out of me. Um, <laughs> like, I don't dis- necessarily disagree with you on a lot of things. Like, the way you talk about women and everything, it's, it's, it's very, very, very real. Women are very insecure, and, but that's the thing, that's where I come to disagree with you. I think you're just talking to men and telling them to take advantage of the fact that women Women are so insecure. Oh, yes, that is what I'm saying. No, but that's... And I'm very upfront. See, you're even admitting that my techniques will probably work. No, no, I do not doubt that for a second. You are very, very smart in that part. And that's why I listen to you. But but I think you're going about the wrong way. I mean, you obviously love to be alone. I mean, I've listened to you. You love your house and you love everything about your life, don't you? I do. I mean, that's great. That's good for you. But, I mean, I've listened to so many guys call and be like, oh, my God, I live my life like you. And it's like, not... It, it, it's fantastic. I'm, I'm so thrilled to hear. And by the way, did you hear? There's, uh, in the next couple of years, households headed by unmarried people will outnumber married households. I know. I know. It's sad. It's like, fantastic. It's sad. We're on the crest of a wave here, for God's sake. I'm sorry, what? We're on the crest of a wave here. I know. And what is so wonderful is that women lord their attractiveness over men and try to get us to uh, spend money on them because they're attractive and stuff. I have figured out a way to turn the tables. The worm has turned. So now we use women's own deepest, darkest insecurities against them so they they no longer have this power over us. You know, it talks in history, all the way back into biblical days, it talks about how women can manipulate men. And and it's taken a long time before some man finally had evolved and given us the kind of thought it deserved. Um, I mean, I, I'm an amateur anthropologist, and I have sat here and given this a lot of thought. Mm-hmm. I can tell. I mean, I listen like that one you were talking about, the woman who wrote on Craigslist about how she she basically was putting her body up for sale. She yeah. thought it was worth it. That's right. It's so sad, though. I think, but then that's when the women revolution come in, and then... We already had the women's revolution. That happened in the 70s, all about feminism and women saying, oh, you've got two hands, do it yourself. And what do you think? I'm going to make coffee for you because I'm a woman and and stuff. And so what women have done is essentially they have uh, made men hate them and not want to be around them and essentially have turned themselves from being loving partners into being sperm depositories. And therefore, we have need to get whatever we can get. Yeah. Without having to listen to it blab all the time. But I've also heard people call in and who disagreed with you about that they have found real, real love. Do you believe? Well, yes. Well, as I always say, a man fell out a 16-story window and lived. Should we all go up to the 16th floor? I don't think so. <laughs> okay, so, but do you believe it's possible? I, I believe it's possible someone's going to win the big spin on Saturday night. It's just not going to be you. You don't think you'll ever fall in love with some woman? Tried that. Really? Yep. <laughs> Hell, I've been married four times. 
Yeah, but, and now but, I have the experience and the know-how to figure out the solution for men. Imagine if the men listening all cooperate. Imagine, for example, here where I live in Southern California. Imagine if all the guys break up with their girls right now. Mm -hmm. There are going to be lines of broken-hearted chicks, tears streaming down their cheeks, waiting to get into bars. You're going to go to bars, see all these women boo-hoo-hoo at the bar. And, and what's going to happen? They're all going to do something they regret. Hopefully with one of my listeners. But don't you believe that people, like, oh, but you're affecting these people's lives and you don't even care? Oh, I, 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 I'm, I'm counting on it. <laughs> uh. and, and what's frustrating for you, Emily, is you know that everything I'm saying is true. It is, but you know why I have, I mean, I disagree, honestly, because I have found something real. All right, but the, but the point is most people don't. I know, and I understand that, but... So I tell people to play the odds. I know. I just, I think... Since you're unlikely to find the woman of your dreams, go out and find a good sperm depository. <laughs> okay. Chip away at her self-esteem, so... play on her insecurities, then toss her back into the pile. But what about them? Like, what do you, so you think that they should just be, so, okay, so for example, the woman that you saw at the bar, she obviously knew what she had and that that's all it was, is that she was just sleeping with you. Right. Mm -hmm. But you see, she never would have done that with her boyfriend. That would never have been a satisfactory Christmas Eve. He would have had to buy presents. Well, first of all, he'd have to break up with his girlfriend and then he would have had to buy presents and he would have had to stay home with her. And they would sit there and, you know, they'd be making popcorn balls and stringing lights or whatever they would be doing. Instead, she came out to a bar and got soused right into my waiting arms. Yeah. And uh, I'll bet she regrets it to this day, not because I did or didn't do her to a tender turn, but simply because, my God, uh, she she likes to think of herself as a woman who wants to fall in love and have a boyfriend and get married and probably have kids someday. And instead, she was in a bar with me dressing like a hooker and ultimately coming home and letting me ram it home. Yeah. And so I, I figure if that worked for me on that Christmas Eve many years ago, we could expand this. Let's all put our girls into the pot. It's just so, it's so bad. Like, it's just so promiscuous and everything about it is just gross. Well, guys are promiscuous. And by the way, women are promiscuous. They just lie about it. Oh, no, and I totally agree with that. I'm not saying that, but just overall, it's just bad. Not every person in the world is promiscuous. Well, Male or female, everyone's dirty. I'm uh, just saying. Well, there you go. So why even bring up the fact that this might seem promiscuous to you? Because it's so gross. <laughs> well, let's face it. It's already happening, except people don't talk about it. All right. I mean, whoever you meet on Match.com was with someone else on Match.com a week ago. Yeah. Right? That's if you're going there. I mean, but I understand people do, because you're talking about how single is desperation, right? The word single is desperation. I call myself unmarried, not single. Yeah. Because I have no void to be filled. Mm -hmm. You won't see me on a singles cruise. Are you kidding me? How desperate is that? Damn money, too. There are women listening to this show who have tickets booked right now on a singles cruise for the holidays. You know that? Mm-hmm. How pathetic are they? By the way, they're going to have sex with anything that looks halfway decent after they've had a few drinks. <laughs> you know, because what, uh, what goes in another zip code stays in another zip code. So I'm just calling a spade a spade here. Mm -hmm. Since we already know this stuff is going on, let's organize. Let's plan it out. I just think, I just, I just think personally, from this point of view, it's just so, it's such a sad and lonely life. Only because we're being honest about something that's already going on. Except now, instead of having it, uh, leaving it to chance, uh, we're organizing. 
understand. People don't understand how to go about it. People don't understand themselves and other people. They just go out there and try to find what is cute and what looks good. And then when they get married, they find out that the that their wife is a horrible bitch. You know? Yeah. I mean, yeah. There's a lot of that, isn't there? And you hear them call here every day. Yep. And I'm so sad for them. Boo freaking who? I know. <laughs> Me, I'm moving on with my life, and I'm enjoying the holidays. Because let me tell you something. <laughs> let me tell you something. Santa Claus really knew what he was saying when he said, ho, ho, ho. Lightyear. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Party like a king with Tom and King's legend Luke Robitaille. Saturday, December 8th. In the exclusive Staples Center Grand Reserve Club. Go to blowmeuptom.com for details. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show from Hollywood. At one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom, thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. Here we are together again on the radio, you and me. And I have a, unveiled my grand scheme for the holidays, and hopefully you'll be participating. Break up with whoever you're with now. Break up with them. And throw them all into the big human grab bags so that uh, we can all pick them up for the holidays. That will save you the costs of Christmas, the uh, demands for engagement rings at New Year's Eve, the problems of uh, having to meet her family. Oh, my God. Save yourself the time. Ludwig on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Tom? I'm doing great. Good, good. I'm doing great myself, you know? Just alive, so I'm always grateful for that. Hey, man. Genius. Genius. I just can't believe it, man. Just can't believe it. You you, you struck me with that. I gotta give it to you. If we all cooperate, this is gonna be a very Merry Christmas for all the men oh, who listen to this oh. show. Oh, oh, definitely, man. More Like you said, man, more than we can handle, man. And I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna tell my buddies, man. I'm gonna call everybody. I mean, not that I wanna, you know, any of their pie, but, you know, to tell whoever they want and so that we can actually benefit from this, man, because this is, uh, uh, if, if you don't mind, I'm going to tell them about Operation Tom. Yeah, absolutely. Tell them. <laughs> man, beautiful, man. I, you know, I'm struck with that. And uh, I would actually like to add uh, about what that Emily was talking about. Yeah. Something about that, you know, about love and all that stuff. Uh, I believe that it's a uh, neutral, you know, like, you know, it could be filled by many, uh, you know, many different people. So... When somebody say, you know, that, oh, there's somebody like the right one for me, you know, they're, they're using incorrectly because there's like, there's many right ones for you, you know, many that can fill that. Well, not to mention the fact many people love you. Your parents love you. Uh, many right, in your right, family right. love you. You have friends who love you. Uh, in some cases, you have neighbors. If you grew up in a neighborhood, they love you. Many of them will be getting together for the holidays. You don't have to take some piece of meat that you've been banging and show her off to everybody to show you're lovable. The people you know already know that about you. That's right, man. That's right. That's right. And uh, and oh, I'm 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 all out for that for this scheme, man. I'm just gonna go for it, man. And to uh, see how how much. Uh, how much meat I get, you know, yeah. it's going to be a record-breaking, man. It's going to um, be a record-breaking. telling you, if everybody participates, if everybody just cuts off contact with the chicks they're with now and uh, leaves these chicks wondering where you are and what happened to you, eventually they're all you're going to have hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of women out there who will suddenly be dumped, not realize why, all feel sorry for themselves, and all be available for the rest of us. Wow. And no strings attached, which is the best part of it. The more you contribute, the more that's going to be in the pot. Beautiful, man. Beautiful. Hey, man, I just I like to you know congratulate you on that. Congratulate you on that one, man, because it takes uh, brains to come up with that one, bro. I believe in giving for the holidays. Beautiful, man, and I believe on giving and, and receiving. You know, receiving as well. Right? Yes. Well, you're going to reach into that grab bag and see what you pull out. 
That's beautiful, man. And, uh, man, thank you for taking my call, Tom. Uh, I, I believe I actually have to go now. You know, you guys killed a couple of my minutes there. I was waiting for 22 minutes, but hey. By know, the way, here's the, by the way, one more great thing about it. After you do this, whatever chick you pull out of the grab bag, her self-esteem is going to be lowered even further, and then it's going to make it better for the guy who takes her back later on. Yeah, I mean, i got to be honest with you, Tom. I'm not all about degrading uh, women, but, uh, you know, I mean, humans, all of them are equal to, to in my eyes, but, but yeah, you're right. Look, uh, women already have low self-esteem, and you could do a little to chip away at it there. That's, <laughs> maybe you can even build it up, you know, just for the heck of it, you know? Oh, you no, know, no, no. We don't want to be doing that. You start telling women they're beautiful and they're smart and... And and wow. you you go girl no 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 don't be doing that no of course not man but uh, okay you got it though I'm not gonna do that bro and All right. damn man good, good stuff man good stuff I'm a regular listener man and uh, thank you for taking my call Tom I did it as a public service uh, Lewis on the Tom Likas show hello oh hey Tom how's it going it's an honor to talk to you it um, is indeed yes yeah um well basically my situation was I was dating my girlfriend for about five months now and I know that's a big no no for one-on-one students having a girlfriend. And anyways, I decided to go against that. So I was doing- How'd that work out for you? <laughs> well, pretty bad, actually. Um, as I was saying, it just ended um, a few days ago, actually. Well, let me just um, give you a brief history about it. We were dating for five months, and um, she moved to uh, Riverside, which is about 50 miles from Los Angeles. That's where I'm, I stay at. So... I would visit her every now and then, about twice a week, and um, that, that's like about, excuse me? I'm just sitting here. <laughs> oh, that hurts, yeah. Um, anyways, Those are the would, voices in your head. Don't worry about it. Huh. All right. Um, anyways, I would visit her about twice a week, and the commute was about 100 miles or so. Anyways, point is, let me just get to the the part where she dumped me. Um she started working recently about, I guess, two weeks ago. And before she started working, she told me, oh, I'm really excited. Um, like When I get the money, I could save it and I'll buy a car and I could visit you. This way you won't, you know, like waste gas and stuff. She, she, she told me all these things that she was excited because, you know, she'll be getting money and we could, like, I guess, do more exciting things and whatnot. Right. Yeah. So she was basically telling me everything. So I was like, oh, it's pretty cool. You know, she's, you know, she's showing some promising signs, I guess. You want to call it that? Yeah. And anyways, so I get this text message about, I remember it exactly. It was the day after Thanksgiving because it was Black Friday. Right. I was doing some, some Christmas shopping for her. And uh, she sends me a text message that says, um, this is getting very awkward. Um, I think we should break up. So yeah, that was that was my situation, and I want to. I don't know. Just should I? What, like, what do I do now? Like, well, I told you what to do. No more girlfriends, and uh, jump into my human grab bag here. Oh yeah, yeah, I know that. But I remember a few segments ago you said something about success is like the best um, revenge. I guess if you want to call it. What is the best? Wait, what? Is, success is the best revenge. Yes. Yes. Yes, and um, I don't know, like. Cause she called me yesterday, and then, like, I didn't really say much to her because, obviously, you know, she just stopped me out. I don't want to – of course, I'm not the same person I was. I'm I'm not really talking to her that much, and she's like, what's wrong? What's wrong? And then I'm like, okay, you stupid. Am I allowed to say bitch? Yes! Yeah, I was like – I was saying to myself, okay, you stupid bitch. You dumped me, like, a few <laughs> days ago, and you expect me to be, like, nothing happened? Like, come on. So should I, like, try to keep her as a friend and still bang her? No, don't, don't even. Move on. Or should I just, like... Move on. She never existed? Move on. You got my answer. Move on. Yep. (laughs) My God, you take 30 seconds of material and turn it into six minutes. Anyway, move on. Thank you. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.